flesh walk through the valley of the shadow of hell, you will realize that there is something ahead. Something that lurks behind the dark veil. A veil that is beyond our own comprehension. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. Right, we're back for a brand new edition, a Monday's edition, and uh, we were going to do some uh, true crime, paranormal stuff, but uh, we've been slammed, so uh, we're going to keep that for next week, hopefully. That's the plan, guys. Mm -hmm. Don't hold us to it. But this week, and this isn't a bad thing, well, maybe for us, (laughs) um... (laughs) We're going to be doing a grave plots today, and uh, we actually added a couple oh, uh, new new titles in there because um, one of our listeners by the name of Blues is going oh, yeah, to, yeah, he yeah. actually put in uh, two two names that he wanted us to do. One of them I really like. Well, hopefully we pick that one. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a grave plots. It might be one of our listeners. By the way, guys, if you ever want to suggest a movie like a fake grave plots name that you would like us to actually do on the show and like make a story for go to our website at longlivethevoid.com and go to the contact section and in the drop down menu it'll say grave plot idea and you can pick that one and then just tell us the name now we don't need the story or the synopsis or any of that just the movie title and try to think of something you know, that you would like to, like the name would sound cool to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we'll try to sell it no matter what. But if it's like pinky bottom fist lip, like I'm just going to be like, what? <laughs> pinky bottom fist lip. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. I got we got some reasons why I said lip, but you'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, how are you doing? I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty good. Yeah. You Other said you've been that, working a lot. Yeah, I've been working a lot. We just moved offices, so... It's been shit. That's been fucking shite. Garbage. Yeah, it's been fucking awful. <laughs> so... That's well, yeah, been... you got out of work late today. Yeah, I've gotten out late every week. Every week, every day. Neat. Every day this week, so that's been fun. Are they giving you overtime for it? Well, they have to. <laughs> yeah, really, well, yeah. not every place does. <laughs> but yeah, but... It's a rank to work state. They do. I just get taxed out the ass extra. Right. Yeah. Especially time, if you don't so. go over like 10 hours or something like that. Yeah. It's real fucking fun. Yeah. I hate it. Super cool. Super cool, guys. Well, I've just been busting my butt. Um, I got to see a cut of one of my buddy's short films, which I was pretty excited about. John Hale, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I hope you're listening. You son of a bitch. Mad love. So we, I got to see it. I was really excited to see it. I'm, I'm excited. I think people are going to like it. Um, awesome. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of stuff like I've been streaming a lot and I don't know. I've been so tired. I don't know if I have the energy sometimes, you know, like putting on a smile and, you know, I love hanging out with people, but, you know, well, when you don't even want to put pants on. like Yeah. When you're getting four or five hours of sleep each night just because you're busy staring at walls for three hours because <laughs> that's the only thing you could do to save your mind. I'm going to go insane. <laughs> I need to stare at this wall. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. I, it's so funny. I went to the when I, we got alcohol for the sh- the horror shot that we're going to be doing. The lady, not the expensive guy. Yeah. It, well, <laughs> well, besides that, the lady at the thing, she was like, she was like, oh, it looks like you're uh, going to be relaxing tonight. I was like, no, always working, busy, busy, busy. Was it the same lady at Walgreens? Yes, Perfect. it's the same lady that's always real chatty at night. No, 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 no. It's a different lady. Aw. It's the other one that you've probably seen occasionally. Probably. Is this the one with the mustache? <laughs> the one with the mustache? No, there used to be one that worked at that Walgreens that had a beard, okay? <laughs> she had a fucking beard and a hey, mustache. Gillette, <laughs> the best she can ever, never get. Yeah. I was kind of jealous. I'm like, I could never grow that. Um... <laughs> 
Wow. You want me to, you know, I can braid. Like, <laughs> Mal's always asks me Jesus. if she's still there because he knows we go to that Walgreens. He's like, is the lady with the beard still there? Don't <laughs> stash bash her, okay? Because that's not. fucked up. I said I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you're being facetious no. or. Okay. I was. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I was. Like anyway, I so I, I asked her, uh, she was like, so you're going to re- relax tonight, right? And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, busy. I was always, I was like, sh- I was like, I don't really do anything. She was like, I was like, I don't like vacations. I just like sitting <laughs> like that's my vacation <laughs> just like from sitting. away from me. <laughs> just zone out for a couple hours. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, but yeah, so we got a, a pretty cool shot for you. So I think it might be that time. Brittany. I, I had a story first. Oh, please do. I got a cat named after me this week. <laughs> what? What's well good on you and your friend's short film, but I got a cat named after me today, so <laughs> well. fucking suck my dick. <laughs> anyway, one That's... of my one of, one of my patients has like a literally he has a house that his ninety cats live in. What? He has two houses, one that he lives in and one that his like ninety cats live in. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not legal, but okay. No one try and report him. He's very nice and he takes care of the cats, okay? Where's his house, Brittany? He's Where named, does he live? I'm not telling anyone. He's named them all and he goes and he literally drives like 40 miles every single fucking day and spends hours at the house like playing with the cats and like feeding them and they're all fixed. <laughs> He's gotten them all fixed and he is, um, they're all vaccinated huh. and shit. So they're like, and a does lot of them Does he eat the strays. extra? I'm kidding. When they I'm die, sorry. he eats them. Yeah. <laughs> But he's got a cat farm. What do you think? He came in. What do you think he does with these things? (laughs) It's not just love. It's dinner. We removed like so. um, They better be fixed or you'd have thousands of cats in there. Right. Yeah. We he um, he'd be using cats as pillows and blankets and towels. (laughs) He has his own house where he has like I think he has like three cats or something that live with him in his house. He's a crazy cat guy. He has a whole house full of cats. And I'm like, I'm sure the HOA is really excited about your cat house. Well, the first thing I think that people of... don't have sex in. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, no, the first thing, I, and I don't mean to take away from you, Brittany, uh, but at yeah, first okay. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Someone named their, like, you know, <laughs> their fur baby or whatever you want to call it after you. And then I was like, oh, 90? Well, yeah, yeah now no. they're just bored. Well, it started off cool. <laughs> now he's just looking for more names. Yeah, now he's just like, what's your name? Walking down the street. Oh, you'll be my 178th cat. Well, how the fuck do you think I felt when he was like, Brittany, I'm going to name one of my cats after you. I was like, well, yeah. that's really fucking sweet. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then he's like, it's going to be the 89th one that I just rescued. And I'm like, you fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm rescue number 89. Like, come on. And when it's r- primed, I was like, now I'm going to make reaching. a nice souffle. <laughs> I was like, Faba now, beans. Now you're just reaching. God damn it. He's very sweet. So I don't know. It was really cute. <laughs> so that was my week. That's a funny story. It's been stupid, but yep. I got a cat named after me. So my cat story is awesome. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. Well, I think it might be that time, no, Brittany. No, it's not. It's time for me to yell it's, at no, you. No, it's time. <laughs> time. Horse. <laughs> Horse. Horse. <Okay>. Horse. Horse. <laughs> not ready. <laughs> you know, Alex, I'm going to name a cat after you. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Horse. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't see. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what's fucked up is that I was planning on fucking with you the first time. Were you? And then I forgot. And then when you did it to me, I remembered. And no, I was like, oh, I shit. Yeah, I should I didn't do even the- do it to you on purpose. I know, but I was. Yeah, I was intending to. You're rude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Horse shot! All right, guys, so we are back to do our horror shot for this week. And as you already know, we always theme it around one of the movies that we're going to talk about on next Thursday that we watched for this week. And those movies are I Drink Your Blood and one of Britney's favorite movies. I Eat Your Skin. (laughs) So if you guys want to watch that double feature, you can find them both. One, uh, you can find I Drink Your Blood. It's not the full version, by the way, guys. On Shudder, I highly recommend watching the Blu-ray version if you have it. It's definitely worth it because it's got extra stuff in it. And you can also watch I Eat Your Skin on Amazon Prime Instant Video, in the States at least. Mm-hmm. So, 
Um, but yeah, so we're going to theme this shot based off of the I Drink Your Blood movie, um, which was originally named something else. And we'll tell you about that on Thursday. But in the movie, people get ravenous with rabies. And we won't explain how because it's just too awesome. But for those of you who have seen the movie, people run around with milky cum lips all over the place. And they fucking scream and act really weird. <laughs> milky jizz lips. Yeah, milky creamy lips. Mm, creamy jizz lips. I, dro- I drooled, dude. That sounds, that's weird. That was disgusting. That, why? That, like, is that some Freudian like? That is. Dr- it's, a for- <laughs> it's not a Freudian slip. It's a Freudian drip. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> so we should call our shot. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, really. Freudian drip. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe we should name it like uh, like suggestive milk. <laughs> milky cum lips. Like, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm no, up for that. I can't put that on. Lie, people are <laughs> just spell it C O M E. And we take a shot of milky chum lips. Just spell it C O M E. Cum lips. Cum. No, someone will. Someone will be on fucking Probably. goddamn fucking. You know. <laughs> Someone's gonna tell their mom, and we're gonna get in trouble. No, milky cum lips. I don't know about milky cum lips. That's milky just too much, milky dude. I think we should just call lips. it like rabies milk. No, milk lip. Can we call it milk lip? No, I don't like that. A rabies milk rabies lip? Rabies stash. No. Milky cum lips? <laughs> yeah, see, we're back. Milky cum lips. I cannot call it that. Milk mouth. Milk mouth. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like that way. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> there it is. Sorry, guys. We got a little, uh, this is how we do it here this at the BTV. This is how we do it. Okay, so to give you an idea what a milk, what is it? <laughs> milk mouth. Milk mouth. Yeah. <laughs> So in order to make a milk mouth, what you want to do is you want to get some vodka. (laughs) Sounds so disgusting. Essentially, guys, it's a white Russian shot, but a little heavier on the on the vodka. (laughs) Get it together, Brittany. I can't. My fucking brain just went 18 horrible directions and I can't control them. (laughs) Brittany's losing her mind. So you're going to want to do about a third of a, well, you want to do about a half a shot of vodka in this shot glass. You can mix these together separately, but that's essentially what you're going to want to use in the cup, however many you're doing. Then you're going to pour a fourth of Kahlua. Then you're going to pour your cream. We're using vanilla cream for this, by the way. (laughs) And you're going to fill it up almost to the top, but not all the way. You want to keep a little room because there's a... Extra ingredient that we're going to be one of well, there's a couple extra ingredients, but <laughs> she's losing her mind over here. I need an adult. So <laughs> then you're going to need a vibrator. <laughs> hey, did it's you not re- a vibrator though? Did you replace the batteries? <laughs> no. <laughs> this one, these ones got worn out quick, right? Yeah. No. Uh, what this you is, know. guys, that you're hearing. That's mine. It's actually a um, <laughs> frother for, for milk. It's like for coffee so that you can make frappuccinos. But it's like this little handheld device. It's amazing. It makes everything better. But you take, you're going to want to whip the cream a little bit because why are you, where, where, are you all right? So you're going to whip a cream up because you want to get the milk mouth ready. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so you're going to want to froth it up nice and <laughs> nice and frothy. You're gonna... Nice and filthy. I'm almost done. Oh, gross. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Put it on full speed. Yeah. Full steam ahead. So now you're going to want to spoon in the cream, the like the actual foamy part. Big spoon or little spoon? On top. Just a little spoon, just enough to get it over the top of the shot. <laughs> just a wee spoon. Now, this is a layered shot, so you're not going to want to mix it. Just a skosh. So just just a spoonful on top, right? Now, there's one last ingredient that we haven't used in forever, but it's the biggest ingredient of all mixed drinks ever. What? And that is just a splash of grenadine. So you just pour a little bit in the center so that there's a red dot. And so then here you go. Here's your little milky uh, milk mouth. When we take this shot, you're going to have to stab me in the chest like 12 times Booby. Okay. and then run off. And then cut off your leg? <laughs> yeah. And then cut off my leg and show it to my girlfriend. And then find an axe and take off? Yeah, yeah. then run. And then just run everywhere? Exactly. So. But not in water? Cheers. Cheers. Nipples. <laughs> Milk mouth. <laughs> it's strong, but it's not bad. <laughs> Woo. It was kind of strong, huh? 
I like the frothy stuff. What was the frothy stuff again? It's just, uh, I used uh, vanilla cream, like coffee creamer. I like it. Look at it. Here. Just put it. You just, I then you're it. just going to put it all over your lips and mouth. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. Was it Here really you go. <laughs> so if you would like to make a milk mouth, all you have to do is go out and find a dog that's ridden Ew. with rabies oh, after it's dead and take its blood and squirt it in your mouth. Or just go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our hashtag horse shot section now. That's it for horse shots. Horse shots. This just in, we've got some horror news ready for your fucking mouths and ears. So suck it up, people. It's the fucking news. Here is the fucking news. So, guys, we got some interesting news here. Um, Looks like Tom Savini and George Romero's daughter are going to be directing a new web series that's going to be in black and white done in an old style film, like silent film era, that's gory as fuck. So, as reported by Tom Savini himself, he said, I can't reveal too much, but prepare yourself for magic tricks, violence, revenge, and horror in the style of a silent film. Also, Jason Baker tweeted, Imagine Old Boy shot as a silent film starring Lon Chaney Sr. It's violent AF. As fuck. Yep. Well, that's what he said, you know. But, yeah, a lot of people are reporting that they just shot uh, one of the episodes for the web series. Uh, It's not soon. uh, We don't know how soon it's going to be coming out, but it's interesting to see that Tom Savini's back behind the director's chair. And I guess he's using his special effects uh, studio that he uses or whatever and all the all the things. So I wonder if he's got like his students working on it, too. Probably. You know what I mean? Uh, Also, this there's some news out that there is going to be a shining the shining themed pop up bar called Room 237. And it opened up this weekend uh, for you guys this past weekend. And if any of you guys went to it, I want to hear about it in the comment section. So I'm sure there's going to be some video of it. I wish, I hope that it comes here because I like these pop-up bars. Me and Christina talk about them all the time. And some, a lot of them are like kind of speakeasy type shit almost. Like they get into trouble for doing these things. But this is what they said. The first um, two thir- room 237 welcomes you to have a bourbon on the rocks from the best goddamn bartender from Timbuktu to Portland, Maine. Step back in time into a different world that will electrify your nights and haunt your days. It says you can drink with Jack Torrance all night and other actors portraying classic roles from The Shining. They have Lloyd, the best goddamn bartender, pour you the Shining-inspired cocktails such as The Caretaker, Apollo 11, The Hedge Maze, and, of course, Red Rum. I think my buddy Nick is going to go, so maybe we can uh, ask him how that went because I'm really curious about it. But, yeah, guys, if you don't know what pop-up bars are, they basically rent out a spot for, like, a weekend or a week, sometimes two weeks I've seen it. Uh, and they rent it out for this time and they have like legit food and drinks and like everything. And it's just this pop up bar. It's like they rent a spot for like this little while and they have this theme attached to it. So if you ever see one, you should definitely get involved. It's sometimes hard to find out about. We have some out here sometimes, but I, I never make them. Never heard of one. You never heard of a pop up bar? I've heard of it, but I've never heard of one here. Oh, damn. Yeah. Wow. Must not have been very cool. I wish I would lived in Chicago right now. So, so Nick, you better let us give us the gory details, you son of a bitch. <laughs> also, on Amazon Prime, I want to start doing this more often because I like searching through all the queues of all the streaming services to kind of see what is out. And I want to kind of give you guys some ideas of some things that I think are pretty cool. There's a lot of really cool TV shows. Like when I was younger growing up, we didn't really have like the Internet. So it's like, you know, we we just had to like find these like weird shows in the middle of the night or late night TV or sometimes it was like on mainstream like prime time. You know what I mean? Um, But there is a lot of TV shows that are coming out that are kind of old. One of them being the infamous Dark Shadows, which has get this, guys, one thousand two hundred and twenty five episodes up on Amazon Prime Video now. 
I had no idea there was that many episodes. I there. had no idea either. That that seems like one of the largest um, shows ever. Mm. Uh, I mean, as far as like horror, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a lot. A thousand two hundred and twenty five. Are you fucking kidding me? It's a lot. I kind of want to watch it now. Yeah. Like watch an episode each night. I kind of do, too. You know what I mean? I never watched it, so. There's also a lot of other things that have come out, like we have the Raid Bradbury Theater seasons that are on there, which are pretty cool. It's kind of like the uh, Amazing Stories sort of thing. They also have Nightmare World of H.G. Wells, which is a newer version of some of the H.G. Wells stuff. It came out in 2016. I haven't seen yet. Nope. But I'm interested in seeing it just because H.G. Wells and Nightmare. Uh, also, Erie, Indiana, which came out in, in the 90s, uh, is going to be is out all the seasons that they have for that. Monsters, which came out in the 90s as well, which was another really tongue in cheek horror fucking TV show that I really adore. Um, there's a lot of stuff on Amazon Prime right now, so it seems like they're getting a lot of attention and they're definitely, you know, competing now with uh, Netflix, I think, yeah. especially in horror, man. Like, I'm finding all kinds of there's stuff in there. There's a lot of there. really crazy shit on Amazon Prime. Yeah, like, some of it isn't in HD, which they don't really care. They're just like, this is what we have, and some of it isn't even the most fully uncut versions, but it's there, so... Yeah. Personally, I think it's uh, it's I'm 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 interested in seeing a lot of that. So I wish I had more hours in a day. In other news, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are actually developing another comedy series. They actually used to do uh, where they first started out with. It was a TV show called Spaced. And they did like recreations of other movies in the episodes. So they, like they did The Matrix and like mm-hmm. all this other shit. And it was just like in their mind kind of thing. But it was really cool. And like I really liked it. But they're doing a new horror show um, called Truth Seekers. Each episode is going to be an adventure, a potential haunting or something, as he says. Peg, uh, Simon Pegg says. It'll start with a very parochial idea, a very small business venture for those people people but it will expand into a series that goes on to be something far more global it's got a language that everyone pretty much understands which he calls the mystery of the unknown Shaun of the dead he says was a very parochial story set in north london and somehow it managed to get this global reach because everyone understands the language of zombie movies so it's basically a tv series about a three-person paranormal investigation team so it kind of seems like that one ghosted show in a way. Yeah. But they're like, we could do that better. Probably. <laughs> and they probably will. But yeah, it seems like everything's going TV shows these days. Doesn't have a release date, but it's coming. So it's the first small screen project to bring them all back together to the horror genre. So a lot of people uh, are really excited about it. And I would be interested to see it, too. Yeah. For all you UFOs, truth, actual truth seekers, not the show that they're going to be doing. There's a new documentary, a paranormal one, a.k.a. UFO, um, for this is what they're calling it, a paranormal documentary, but it is about UFOs that's now on VOD, and it looks kind of interesting. I'd be kind of interested to see what it's about. Um, It's called Invasion on Chestnut Ridge. It was written, edited, and directed by Breedlove as part of his what he calls, quote-unquote, Small Town Monsters series which premiered on amazon on october 2017 it says in southwestern pennsylvania lies an expansive mountain range called the chestnut ridge though a home for unusual activity since the 1800s the area has been largely overlooked until now so this marks his third collaboration between breed love and terror films so previous titles include the mothman of point pleasant and boggy creek monster so uh, has some pretty interesting uh, artwork about it. Looks kind of like 80s and the Super title. Cute. Pretty cool. So I- I'm interested in looking at it because I get into shit like that. Weird. Now, if you were listening last week on Monday's episode, we were talking about the Jigsaw experience or Saul series experience. Happening in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's happening in Las Vegas. And we were talking about how we felt like this seems like they're trying to promote something. At least I felt like that it was trying to promote something because that's usually what they do to promote something. Well, lo and behold, 
The Jigsaw movie that just came out not too long ago received about $100 million worldwide at the box office. It was shot on a reported budget of about $10 million. All it needed was about $40 million to cover all of its uh, costs in like promoting it and marketing. They spent more money on the marketing than they did on the movie. That's Isn't crazy. that crazy? That is crazy. And probably distribution and all that other bullshit, whatever they have to spend it on. But anyway, they needed $40 million to break even, and they made one and a half times that. So that's pretty impressive. So clearly, without surprise, Twisted Pictures is planning on ninth Saul film. And while people don't know much about it, it is considered a conversation, in quotes. Jigsaw directors Michael and Peter Spierig will not be returning to the director's chair so a lot of people were I've heard some good things about the Jigsaw movie, which I still haven't seen because I wanted to watch all the other ones because there's no way to want. I know that it's all going to be connected oh, for sure. and it would have been fucking a waste of my time yeah. to not have watched all of those movies. Right. So mm -hmm. I didn't watch it in theaters. How about you guys? Did you watch the new Jigsaw or did you fall into the same category as us? Are you excited about a ninth Jigsaw or Saw film? Speaking of Saw. There's actually, believe it or not, a Saw-inspired game called Play With Me that's now on Steam. Heavily inspired by the franchise, but not connected to it in any way. Uh, it's just been released on Steam, like I mentioned. The game casts you as Robert Hawk, an investigative journalist who, together with his wife, Sarah, has disappeared. It seems Hawk has caught the attention of a serial killer known as Illusion, who has been the subject of Hawk's investigative articles and who hawk was close to uncovering the identity now hawk finds himself in the illusion and must get through a maze of puzzles in order to survive they have a focus on the player's imagination to solve puzzles as well as various moral choices and multiple endings so this is probably as close as you'll ever get to a solved video game there was apparently a Konami's 2009 survival horror title called Saw, the video game, and its sequel. But this one is 15% off right now until January 24th, so you should be able to get this just in time before it goes off sale um, when you're hearing this. So go get it. Buy it now. We'll put some links to the trailers and such like that and all of our news below, and you can check it out right now. <laughs> But that's it for the news! All right, guys. So we are going to go ahead and step into our grave plots. <laughs> so we're going to pick up. If you guys don't know what this is, this is where we make up movies on the spot by pulling a name out of a hat. And we're going to do that right now. We are back for the Grave Plots. So to further explain what Grave Plots is for the new people that are listening, Grave Plots is an exercise in creativity where we will make up names, movie titles that we think are horror names, put them in a crystal, crystal skull with diamond eyes. It's worth a billion dollars. We pull that out, the name. We toss it back and forth each each week or each time we do the grave plots. And then we come up with the premise, the concept, the characters, the kills, the deaths, the everything. And then we even make a fake VHS cover for the movie and then post it up for your listening enjoyment, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so last week, Brittany pulled. I did. So. And I got yours. This week. You're going to pull and you're going to get mine. Right. It's going to happen. And and like I said, guys, earlier on in the episode, we added some names from one of our listeners, um, you know, that wanted to put their names in the in the pile that we might be able to pull out. So one of these might be one of our listeners. And if you guys want to add those, like I said before, go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our contact section. The drop down menu will give you a great plot idea and you can send it to us and we'll get it and we'll add it to the pile. As long as it's not something fucked up, I'm like, <laughs> I'll make that decision. But 
we will make that decision. But anyway, I picked one out. So let's see what it is. I'm pretty sure I put some terrible ones in there. So. Oh, man. Oh, it's one of mine. God damn it. <laughs> the rickety man. Oh, Alex. What? What's wrong with the rickety man? You're fired. This could be a cool one. You're fired. It could be great. You're fired. I like this name. It's all you, Brittany. Brittany, since I d- made this name up, I have to stay silent until she gives some somewhat of a premise for the story. And then I jump in. And if I have a better suggestion and she likes it, we can switch to what I have. But it's up to her what we do with this. So go ahead, Brittany. Discuss. What is the rickety man, Brittany? There's dogs barking outside for the rickety man. They have ideas. Yeah, maybe. Let's let's pull the dogs. Well, just think about the name. Like, what is it to you in your mind? What what is the first thing that pops into your mind? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Literally. Also, like, like a wooden man. A wooden man. All right, we'll continue. I'm listening. I'm all ears. It's all you, Brittany. <sighs> You're not used to this, are you? No, I don't like it. It's two weeks in a row. <laughs> feel like we should start this off like it's a folklore legend. Some sort of rule set or it feels something. Feels good. It feels right. good. So it's like an old fucking grandpa telling his grandchild the ye old tale of the ye old rickety man. Have you heard the tale Have of you, the rickety man? Have you heard the tale of the rickety man, little dummy? Sit down, Susie. Sit down, Jonathan. Sit down Grandpa's lap and I'll yeah. tell you. Let story. Grandpa pull out his rickety pants. Gross. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. That took a weird direction. <laughs> uh, rickety man. Okay. So, I'm trying to think of something with, like, puppets, but there's so many puppet things. That doesn't have to... Whatever you want. Ugh. Just get a loose concept, and I can pitch you what I think. What does the word rickety mean to you? Unstable and not well lubed. Okay. So, <laughs> what does what not well lubed mean <laughs> to you? <laughs> Has he got arrows he creaks. that he pours on his joints? Is that he creaks a lot? He had a arrows made of tin. Grandpa Bob telling a story. Of, no, not Bob. Grandpa e- Eugene. Okay. Telling a story to little Timmy. Hello, Timmy. About, about the the r- tale of the rickety man. So the rickety man is a man that's made out of. We're gonna make him out of old car parts. That's what he's gonna be made out of. Okay. And he's bloodthirsty because <laughs> he wants to be a real man. Okay. Not just a rickety man. Do you want me to jump in? Yeah, please. I'm Personally, drowning. when I think of rickety, and I did, I honestly did not put this story together or anything previously to this. <laughs> it's an old bullshit. one that I pulled from the old from a from one of the like months ago because we accidentally threw away all of our ideas. By the way, guys. <laughs> yeah, we did. It happens, you know. This place this gets a fine. fucking disaster. We've got like seventeen bottles of alcohol sitting here. <laughs> we do literally. <laughs> I don't remember, even remember the it, old ones I had. It's so. bigger than the bar I have now. <laughs> But I personally think of wood because mm. wood, re- you know, is rickety. Fucking duh. You that know makes, what I mean? Oh, Jesus. That makes sense. Well, I did say Pinocchio. You did. Yeah. That's why I was like, huh, I'm kind of curious. Car parts, huh? I don't know. I was trying to not do Pinocchio. Right. Well, no, no, no. We don't have to do. Maybe it doesn't have to be a doll. Maybe it's just an a old man that you hear creaking when he comes near you Ew. somehow. Yeah. Right. That's freaky. Right. Ew. Yeah. I like it. See what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, he's coming, but you don't know from where. So and it may be be so literal me next time. Yeah. Well, I think rickety to me sounds like a guy with nails and wood put together almost. You know what I mean? I just like a gross, creepy old man. Maybe he was. Maybe he was some sort of. uh, Oh, I got it. Like, maybe it is kind of a Pinocchio story. But in the sense that the guy who was making this life size doll there was a movie called fear that was similar to this by the way i think it's fear fear itself or some no it's just fear they made a second one it was really weird uh (laughs) it was like a guy made out of wood i feel like we should do that sometime because it's just so forgotten um but yeah like maybe maybe he spent his life making puppets and stuff like that and his last dying wish before he died was to make this life-size man that he put a lot of care and work into and it was very lifelike in a way, and it was made out of wood, and somehow he gets, like, maybe somebody robbed his house or broke in and killed him, or he got killed unjustly, and his blood seeped into the wood. 
Ooh. of the life-size doll. And so the doll became him. Him. In a way. Okay. But like a twisted demonic version of him. Mm. But but why would he be after somebody? Like what is the story? Like why I don't I don't want to be make it a necessarily a revenge tale, but it's just like it could get turned into whatever it is. Maybe he hunts down uh, people who cut down trees, or maybe he doesn't like people being in his house or in his neighborhood, and he tries to kill people that are in his house, or and he thinks it's like the spirit, or like it's somebody trying to break into his house again, or like what? Or maybe who killed him actually cursed him, and he has to oh. kill X amount of people before he can not be. Made so what if he was cursed beforehand? Oh, maybe he went to some like gypsy or some sort of like a fortune teller, a fortune teller or something like that. And he pissed her off or something like that and, and insulted her in some way because he was like trying to find out if, uh, you know, like if his inheritance, whatever would help his children or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Something about that. And then she put a curse on him. And then when he dies, he bleeds into his doll. All you'll ever be as an old rickety man. Yeah. Something like that. And maybe it doesn't even have to be that he was like trying to seek a, a, like a, like a, it doesn't have to be a gypsy. It could maybe he just wronged somebody on the street that was like a, some sort of voodoo. The vo- yeah. Voodoo priestess. Yeah. Or something. or something. It could, maybe it could be in Louisiana and like this guy's like a whittler and he creates puppets and he makes this life size doll and he gets killed by some ritual or something. Or maybe he just gets, uh, I don't know. And so he's cursed to capture the souls of people for this whoever. Voodoo priestess. Do you think voodoo? I think we should do voodoo. Mm. Man, after watching Eat Your Skin, huh? <laughs> no, I don't know. I feel like voodoo is too simple. Right. I and mean, it's kind of cheese. And che- Definitely cheese. A little cheese dick. Dickery. <laughs> Dickery. Um... Maybe he owns a warehouse. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. Maybe like he owns a warehouse and he he sells, manufactures puppets, like popular, like not puppets, but doll, like kids toys. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of going out of business. And there you go. Yeah. It's going out of business because nobody wants fucking wooden dolls anymore. Right. And okay. Or even before that point, maybe he hasn't, he had an accident when he was producing these dolls and then he died making them. And so that's how part of his blood got into this, like... Maybe one of, he gets caught in one of the machines. Yeah, and then he gets his blood and whatever gets made into this doll, and then the doll ends up going out of business because of all the other shit that comes Ooh, across. What if, I, think, I think what would be cool is, like, what if he's having troubles? It's not necessarily the bank, but the bank's trying to foreclose on him or whatever the fuck it is. Try, he won't, they won't give him a loan because he's not making enough money or whatever. And then someone tries to come in and rob him, somebody that works at the company that he has and just sees him as a weak person or whatever. It's a family-run business, but they see him as a weak person, and he did, that person doesn't give a shit about him. They come in when he's working in mass with his buddies or whatever, and they fucking shoot him and kill him, and it bleeds all over the dolls, and he, you know, cracks open the safe. And even then, they don't even... He doesn't even have any money in there. You know what I mean? Like, it's... They make him open it, and there's, like, nothing, hardly. And so they kill him because of it or something like that. And then he, he bleeds on... He, like, stands up, and he's like, please, no, no, and he gets shot and the blood spills on the manic or the the doll that he's creating in his special like whittling room or whatever the fuck it is you know what I mean? his whittle room he's all whittle room, his whittle room. <laughs> i don't know he's whittling his dick oh, Jesus. uh in the daytime uh anyway <laughs> only in the daytime. daytime that's his favorite time Gross. that's his me time he is old so. <laughs> i don't know yeah that but he, he's probably flipping a noodle through his fingers if he's trying to do that he's old I don't get hard anymore, right? Is that what happens Jesus. to do? Jesus. <laughs> Just flipping a noodle Sorry, through his fingers. That's ridiculous. It was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, so, but anyway, he gets shot. The blood goes on the doll, but he kind of like falls into the, to the, the life-size doll. Mm-hmm. And they spit on it and shit. Like they like, he's like trying to protect it as he's dying in a way. And like, and he falls on it and and he's like, has a name for it or something like what would oh, he call Henry. it robert or like henry henry really that doesn't oh. sound menacing neither is robert <laughs> robert the doll well there's an actual doll i know i was like there's an actual doll named robert right? yeah that's so, a haunted doll let's not do that one yeah uh well it doesn't have to have a name <laughs> because then it wouldn't be the rickety man right so. right because that's his name 
What's his? What's the the? What's the Eugene? Is that his Eugene name? is the old man. Yeah. Okay. Eugene. Uh, so these. Okay, so so essentially, it's a gang of guys that he goes out to kill. There you go. Now we got a motive mm-hmm. for why the rickety man is creaking and cracking all the way. To, all through town. Yeah, yeah. Like like maybe he just shows up and you just hear like creaking of wood, mm-hmm. and you don't really know. And it's just like it could be in the future. It could be. Shortly after, not in the future. I don't want to do the future, but we'll just do it like re- like within a year later or something yeah, like that. Not too far. Yeah, maybe it's like on the anniversary of his death, he comes back. You that know what sense. I mean? And it's an old warehouse that's now shut down, like the business, but they abandoned it. They can't sell it. Maybe the people that are coming in to clean it out and stuff also right. get affected by this. Try and sell it, right? Somehow, like they shift around the 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 life size doll. The mannequin sort yeah, of like, like, what is this fucking creepy? Thing? Right. Yeah. They're like, Ew, I don't like Throw it. it out. Yeah. So will those be the protagonists, like the hero protagonists sort of that are involved? No, I think they should just be the people who accidentally start this whole thing. OK. But they don't really have a direct involvement. Well, OK. I don't know. Maybe because uh, someone could. Mm. I love the sound. That sound of the like creaking. Yeah. In the dark is freaky. Yeah, it's weird. Like, that is, like, I don't know what it is about that, but that, like, trips me the fuck out a little bit if I were to hear, like... <laughs> Rheumatoid arthritis in the dark. Yeah, you just hear it creaking, like, all the time. <laughs> like, that would be fucking weird. Yeah, ew. What is that? That would be weird. I'll try to add a sound effect in here so that you mm-hmm. guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So maybe those people just like find it as they're cleaning out this warehouse and they're like gross this is weird and creepy and they toss it out and then a group of kids finds it. It don't even have to be kids. It could just be like some person going to the dumpster or some shit. Ooh, what if the kid like befriends the doll? Yeah, that's his only friend. Right. But he's nice to the kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he should be. The kid rescued him from the trash. And maybe he's like, maybe he calls it uh, uh the rickety man. Yeah, that's how it gets its name. Yeah, and they think it's like his. The kids' parents think it's like a, like uh, just some imaginary friend imaginary or something. Friend, yeah. Or I mean, that, you know, when I was a kid, it's so funny. Like I've mentioned this before and other things. I never had an imaginary friend or anything, and I would think that that's kind of concerning for children. Right. But I remember when I'm like a child, like today, like if a kid had an imaginary friend, people would be freaking the fuck out. Either the A, they would think that there's something wrong with the child. I feel like it's more common now than it ever was. Is it really? I don't even know. I never had an imaginary I haven't friends. been a child in so long. I was, I was a child not that long ago. <laughs> and the not so di- I'm still a child. But in the not so distant past, I was a child. I did not have an imaginary friend. No, but I'm just saying. It I is have real just- friends. But I like that idea. Like I don't know if it's too much or too overdone. So, yeah, so maybe this kid is like has an imaginary he they think it's an imaginary friend, but he like finds him in some dump that he goes out and the kid like, you know, like kids venture out and find like weird spots where, you know, maybe it's in this old house that he goes and and colors or does weird shit with his friends and stuff. Light things on fire. Yeah. Like (laughs) maybe he he has no friends and he finds this doll and he kind of like maybe he even brings him home one day. Yeah, so he befriends this doll. Right. His doll's his friend now. It's a human life-size doll, you know what I mean? So he's, like, dragging this shit around. hmm And, like, his mom's like, what do you got there? And she's like, ooh, that thing's kind of creepy. That's weird. And it's got, like, what would it look like? Like, what does this doll look like? We kind of have to give a little bit of a description of it. Something different, you know? Maybe it's, like, really happy face, like, yeah. with a bulbous, like, round nose a little bit. Almost like a clown, but not really. He looks like one of those little cherub angel things. You think? Yeah. With a big, big, bright smile on big it? Old stupid grin. Okay. Big old shitting grin on that face. But, like, long, weird fingers and arms and like really lanky and strange looking. Okay. But with a big, creepy smile. It's, like, kind of gray. Okay. Maybe the, like the the guy, the old man's kind of a quirky asshole too. Before he dies, he hates dogs. Like that'll play later on. That's like what do you call it? 
foreshadowing foreshadowing yeah so he's like it's like foreshadowing the future of of like something that happens with another dog like the family dog that this kid brings the doll to the house and he doesn't like him and stuff because the dog's like chewing on his leg or something the duck fetches him like a stick yeah <laughs> his penis <laughs> yeah no i'm kidding <laughs> that's what it would fetch why is this doll have a is it aut- autonomous <laughs> or what do they call anatomically it? Anatomic- <laughs> anatomically <laughs> la, 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 la. La, 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 la. anatomically correct <laughs> sorry guy man i'm i can't talk tonight yeah um okay so okay so i think what should happen is is this is and, and he's not is he wearing any clothes the doll yeah or is he just bare well if he's got a little wooden penis he needs to have some shorts no we're not on. gonna have penis i oh, was just then joking he's na- like then he's naked <laughs> okay he so he's not dick. anatomically correct no he's am- anatomically incorrect incorrect you just so he's got, got a vagina he's got a fucking barbie <laughs> He has a Barbie bulge. Okay, he's That's got a man's got. bulge. He's got a Barbie and Ken bulge is what he has. Okay, so he's just like a just a rounded. But it's not sad. like it's not the size of a human. So this person couldn't like dress up like and walk around like a human being. You know, it's it's definitely that was life size. It is life size, but it's not like a a human body. It's like very sticky, and I don't know how to explain it. Like his legs are not as big as a human's legs. It is life size. But oh, it, sticky like stick like. Yeah, I don't want it to be human, human like. I want it to be like life size, but not human. Like it's definitely a fucking creepy ass big, fucking big, tall, weird. Right. Exactly. Stick doll. Right. Right. Okay. So it looks like a bunch of matches put together. Right, and it's like unfinished too. So it's like you know his face is painted. Maybe only half of his face is painted. Yeah, something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, but he's got like a real wicked clown smile, like. Just like real, like happy, and but then only half of it. and it's not a clown nose, okay? Just, just, just like a big, like short but fat kind of nose. I don't know how to explain it. And he's got like really like nice eyes, and he almost has like they put he put like eyelashes on him and stuff like that, and painted his face up a little. Oh, bit. gross! He should have like the weird baby doll eyes that are Ooh. like weighted, so when he lays down, they close, but when he sits up, they're open. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Gross, yeah. Uh, so fucking weird. So okay, the kid, the, the doll somehow is seeking revenge for the guys that uh, that ro- tried to rob or that killed him mm-hmm. and robbed his warehouse of his doll factory or whatever, the wooden doll factory that they made all this like because he made cheaper ones, but he also made like premium. Like he made ones that he sold individually and and actually yeah, had a custom. whole menagerie of fucking like custom made ones that he you know kept as well. Mm-hmm. And maybe that doll will lead the kid and the family to that spot in some way where he has all these hidden dolls under the floorboards or some shit where he just keeps them all. Or he just made a fucking doll that looks like everybody in the town secretly. Oh, that'd be weird. And hid it under the floorboards. Right, yeah. Ew. Maybe he's got like the bones of his mother somewhere, like hidden somewhere. And you find out how dark it really goes. Oh, that's like you feel like bad for the guy. Psycho-esque. Like you feel bad for the guy. Well, it doesn't have to be his mother, but I'm just saying something yeah. like something dark. And his like sister. you feel bad for the guy initially and you kind of feel like it's just. But yeah, then you yeah, realize there's weird. something way darker about it at the end of the movie. So that way the sequel, you know, mm-hmm. we set it up. We set it up perfectly. But anyway, this guy, like, sometimes the doll disappears or moves in different spots. Yeah, he finds it missing and then in, like, random spots throughout the house or the yard or... Oh, there you are. Down the street or whatever. There you are, Mr. Rickety Man. hmm There you are. Maybe he just calls him Rickety. Yeah. That's cool. I like that better than Eugene. Like, his name well, is yeah, Eugene, but yeah. Say, well, the guy's name is Eugene, but he loses that when he becomes the doll. So he becomes whatever the kid calls him, which would just be rickety. Yeah, he calls him rickety. Yeah. Okay, so so the doll sometimes disappears. Now, we got to kill some people off. Like, he's got to go out, and you, you don't really see that it's the doll right away. Like, I think it's probably a good idea that we don't just, like, show the doll in action, you know, kind of milk it a little bit, mm-hmm. so that you see the kills... But it doesn't really make sense. You kind of see it off camera. It does. It's off camera, you know. And maybe it kills him in some like really kind of gruesome way or what, whatever. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe the first one just gets shot. Maybe one of them gets pushed off a building. Yeah, I don't like, think he should shoot anybody. You don't think? No, he's a doll thing made of wood. Was there a special sort of like wood carving tool that you could kill somebody with? That's like kind of cool. Well, there's like the jigsaws and all these different types of saws 
hmm. table saws. And It'd be kind of cool if he had like a special weapon, like, right? Little, little or they've got like the it looks like a spatula kind of thing at the one end, and then they have the hammer to shave off wood. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Like making a canoe or some shit. That sounds fucking ridiculous. Well, they you have Dremels. That's the one that I'm thinking of. That's part of but they drill, have those like it? weird hook ones. Oh, yeah. Like, I think it'd be interesting, like, if he killed people with, like, the, the wooden hammer and some of the, like, chisel spots. Uh, maybe there is that weird hook one that you use to shave things. Um, but maybe he, like, gouges it in one of their eyes. Oh, I was wanting him to put his weird long wooden fingers through someone's eyes <laughs> oh okay <Beak. laughs> all right yeah but maybe 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 like but he that's does like later yeah well that doesn't matter i mean we could do the first one that'd be cool with me like one of the weirdest kills i always think of is in halloween 3 the one that you hate yeah it's got one of the weirdest fucking kills the guy sticks his fingers in someone's nose and pops up the bridge of their nose killing them and it is fucking what the fuck crazy yeah. dude but maybe he just smashes his head with something just beats him repeatedly but then he has to hit him something with so you can't see his hand that's why i don't want that to be a kill right away right okay yeah yeah, yeah. but we can but i'm saying he could smash this guy's head mm -hmm. so somehow magically because he's the rickety man he knows how to find where these guys are because they they're yeah. cursed we by him explain that part right it doesn't matter it doesn't have him. to be like yeah. makes sense <laughs> to make any sense but he just shows up at one of these guys house maybe he's like hanging out with his uh friends or whatever like counting the money or is it a year later did we decide on that was it a year later it's a year off it's his anniversary of his death the it's anniversary of his death yeah right or maybe it's like a week before the anniversary of his death. Yeah, and if he yeah, that would be good to lead up to it. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So he goes to one of these other guys' places. One of the, one of the bad guys. One of the fucking robbers, the burglars, murderers, whatever you want to call them. One of them. So how many is there that went to this warehouse? Four. You think four? Okay, four. that's good with me because we don't. I don't want to get into too many characters. So we're gonna name these guys. We're gonna name one Roy. Dick. Roy. Dick. Um. George. Georgie. And some other weird name, like a name that doesn't get used. Roy, Dick, Georgie. Titus. And Faze. You know, it's just some weird, cool name they call them, you know? Faze. Yeah. Blaze. Blaze? Okay, yeah. Maybe they have Nick. Yeah, like, that's fine with me. So there's Roy, Geor Georgie, Dick, and... Blaze. Blaze. So Blaze is going to die first. He's out smoking a joint, drinking... Stupid name. Count money or whatever the fuck he's doing for some other job that he's like planning on you hear him talk on the phone about a new job that he's gonna be doing he's like yeah you know i'm i'm in man we got this shit we've been fucking covering our ass you know whatever and he hangs up so you feel a little extra like you know you want me to kill a kid like what that's fucked yeah, up yeah you gotta man. just set something up to make you like not feel really feel it. good about killing him yeah so like you know i don't usually take contracts for killing kids but i guess if the price is right hey man you're paying the money i don't give a fuck who it is you know yeah. And he's like, man, crazy motherfucker as he hangs up. You know, he's like, but man, you know, maybe he's watching porn in the corner. Like it's on. He's smoking a joint or whatever. And uh, so what does he kill him with? Like some sort of long object, something long, like a bat or maybe it's just a spike or. Well, let's do the. It could be just like anything around the place. Like it could be a club yeah, so or it just, could be. Maybe he just grabs a fucking bat that's in the guy's door frame. Right, or maybe doorway. he's like swinging it while he's on the phone. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that'll work. You know what I mean? Like talking to the guy, he's like, I don't give a fuck, man. He's just like batting practice, like swinging while he's on the phone and shit, like trying to be all cool. And uh, yes. and then uh, he- Bash brains in like the best of them. The yeah, way. he puts he the bat down. Line. And then when he comes in, like he goes out of the office wherever he was swinging the bat to go turn off the lights or something like that, right? And he hears this crick creaking shit, right? And he's like- this will be a cool moment for when he turns the lights off to just see a weird shadow. Right, in the background. Right. Like, you, the viewer oh, catches it. He doesn't catch he it. He has no idea, but the viewer right. sees it, yeah. So he's shutting off the lights systematically in this fucking, like, chop shop sort of, like, kind of warehousey place that he works or that he does all his, like, bad guy stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> his bad guy his, warehouse. His bad guy house. Welcome to the bad guy warehouse where we do bad things. Mm -hmm. With Murder? bad people. Got it. Rape? Yeah. Got it. We got all the tools necessary for bad guys. <laughs> Burglary? We definitely got that. <laughs> Give us right a call price. at 1-800-BAD-GUYS. For the right price, we'll do just about anything. <laughs> yeah, Give right. us a call. 1-800-BAD-GUYS. So he's systematically turning off some of the lights. You see the shadowy figure in the background. He hears the creaking now. And it's like this weird creaking, popping noise. And he kind of turns and he's like looking to see what it is. And he's like, the fuck, the fuck is that? And then he goes to the office to grab the bat. He's like, look, motherfucker, you want to try to fuck with me? Who the fuck's in here? I'm armed, bitch. Yeah, I'll knock your fucking like teeth in. And then it's like, and then. Uh, with the stapler, because there's no bat. <laughs> but, well, but yeah, he goes to get the bat and it's not there. Mm -hmm. So he's like, what the fuck? Who's fucking with me? Georgie, is that you? Yeah, right, right. There you go. That's good, yeah. <laughs> so all the guys have left. He's the guy that's, like, closing up shop and shit like that. He's not the guy that, that worked at the company, by the way, at the warehouse a year before. So we'll we'll just say uh, Roy works there at the at the warehouse that the Eugene, the rickety man, has now turned. He's turned into rickety man. Well, kill Roy last. Kill Roy, huh? Kill Roy. Um, Okay, so anyway, so he sees the shadowy guy, or the shadowy guy's in the background, the viewer sees it, he goes to get the bat, the bat's not there, he's kind of freaked out a little bit, starts screaming, thinking it's a joke and shit like that, and then he goes to, into the darkness a little bit to go turn on the lights or whatever, on the switch or whatever, and as he walks past something, he gets hit in the face and he kind of spins around and he's like, what the fuck? And then it just starts clubbing him on the head, and you see him drop and it just, it's just smack, it just keeps hitting him in the face. Like over and over and over again until he's out, and like it's almost like irreversible. You ever seen that movie? Mm, yeah. Oh my god, that's some that's one yes. of the most violent head bashings I've ever seen. Anyway, he yeah. bashes his fucking head with a bat, and then it just drops it. You know what I mean? It doesn't even yeah, care. It's like just like paste, right? At that point, and they try to like you know the cops somehow show up later on. They find out, or maybe they try. You know, I don't know. Should the cops show up? No, no. We w we shouldn't get them involved. Nope. Because it's their le illegal chop shop slash bad guy oh, warehouse. Well, I don't know. Okay. Bad guys are us. So they show up and they like try to figure out how the fuck this happened. They check the tapes and stuff, and they can't see who it is. Yeah. Like they just see shadows. You know what I mean? In the footage and wherever. And they never see anybody come in either. So they're, they're like, what the fuck? How did this guy get in here or whatever? Mm -hmm. So the other three guys, we got Georgie, Dick, and Roy, who was the one that worked at the warehouse. They'd initiated the attack on Eugene, the rickety man. Okay. So the doll's now gone back to, what's the kid's name? Timmy? What'd you call him? We, I don't think we named him. What is his name? Scotty. So Scotty, he goes back to the Scotty and and there's like blood on the on the doll somehow, but it maybe it, it sucks it in a little bit. It's like what's this? But there's blood on the on the on the doll's hands, and they're like he's like taking him out, carrying him out, and he's like, "Come on, Rickety, we're gonna go play out in the thing." And then he touches his hand. He's like, "Oh, you got Did you, you got that strawberry syrup, Rickety? Yeah, you got pain on your hands." And uh, it, maybe maybe each time he kills and gets blood on him, it starts to finish the doll a little bit more so it's kind of apparent to everybody that doesn't realize maybe what yeah do you, i like that what do you actually. think i think that's kind of cool adds another layer to it yeah it doesn't have to make it look like him it's just they the, the maybe the family thinks that he's painting him or he's whittling him or something like that and maybe his dad buys him the tools to fucking whittle him that's where he gets it right and this kid's a younger kid but not too young maybe he should be like you know I don't know, eight, nine. Yeah, eight's good. Because kids can whittle at eight or nine, right? It's not that dangerous. I mean, they could cut themselves though. Whatever. So like they he like the kid notices that there's blood on the on the doll's hand, but kinda like dismisses it because he's too he's a stupid piece of shit. And uh <laughs> no <laughs> He's a stupid piece of shit. I'm just kidding. Because he's eight <laughs> or nine. What did we say? Nine? <laughs> I forgot already. Jesus. Because he's eight and he's a child and he's right. an idiot. I'm sorry, so, guys. I'm is. sorry I get carried away. He's an eight-year-old idiot. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's a fucking eight-year-old. He's a fucking eight-year-old. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so maybe later that night he brings, maybe he tells his mommy, he was like, 
or his dad gives him the tools. He's like, maybe we can finish up old uh, Mr. Rickety Man for you. You know, the, we can get them all fixed up. Me and you, I'm going to sit you down and teach you. And we're going to do this together. But like each night he finds like wood shavings on the floor. And like, you know what I mean? Every time he kills, like maybe it's not wood shavings, but he just sees a little piece of him. And he's like, have you been working on your doll? No, the Rickety Man did it, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, okay, he must be really talented, hey, Barbara. Fucking weirdo. <laughs> uh, yeah, so his parents are not really in the picture, but they are somewhat. Um, more, It's more about the kid and the doll and, and then these bad guys. Yeah, they're obviously background characters. Cause you can't right. just have an eight-year-old being fucking all willy-nilly running around with a weird doll. Right. <laughs> he has to have something. There, there has to be a moment, though, where maybe they kill. it kills his parents. Yeah, but this will be like after he, like, that'll they be They find like out, mid. sort of, yeah. The, th- the second or, second, the, after or the third second act. Death, it's yeah. got to be the third act. That's fine. After the third person gets killed. Yeah, you think after the third after the person? Third yes, bad guys, guy death. Well, I think that maybe a two people die, plus like maybe the dog, and then... Maybe you always got to kill a dog. I like killing dog. No, You're I don't. No, person. I don't know. Because I just... It's got to be something that's like, you know, you got to add extra little pieces, you know what I mean? Maybe their dog's called Bones or whatever like that. And like he hated dogs in his in his past life. You see him like he just killed the dog that chewed on his legs all the time. Yeah, because the dog's chewing on his leg and you see it get hurt really bad or something like that. You know, you hear it yelp Mm -hmm. and they don't understand why it is. And I think that little Scotty did it. Right. And so maybe now Scotty's getting a little scared of Rickety. Mm -hmm. So we got Dick, Roy and uh, Georgie. No, Blaze is the one that's dead. Dick. Georgie. Blaze Roy. will be like the Mohawk guy, like the cool guy, whatever, fucking, you know, like jockey right. fucking whatever. He's Maybe, dead now. Yeah. It used to play baseball. Um, so he then did. we got Georgie gets is the next one off. But now he's with somebody else. Maybe he's with Roy when this happens. Uh, and we're kind of in the second act now. But we should we do the dog thing first or then do Georgie and then do Georgie or do it the other way? Because I kind of think it needs to be a progression. Dog first. Okay, so Georgie, after- Roy, and Dick are all like, "What the fuck is going on? Why did Blaze? Why is Blaze fucking head bashed in in the fucking place? All the doors are like, you know, nothing's broken." Um, so yeah, so like the dogs like chewing on fucking Rickety's leg in the morning or or in in the middle of the night or something like that, and he's like trying to chew on it or whatever, and you hear it yelp and it like hits across like it's thrown across the room Mm -hmm. into like a dresser or something like that you know and it's like yelps and then the kid wakes up and doesn't realize anything and he's like are you awake mr rickety and you see its head turn a little bit and he's like okay i'm going back to sleep you know no big deal but when they wake up the mom screams because she sees the dead dog in there and they they don't know what's going on Mm -hmm. so they think the kid did it maybe right what do you think he had one of those night terrors again. Right. But they can't figure out what it is. And maybe they, I don't know. Yeah. They just make up a bunch of shit to try and figure right. out. Right. Okay. Happened. Okay. So then it's the next night. He like maybe um, Scotty, the little kid, takes him out to his little spot where he kind of found him before. And they were doing house or whatever the hell the kids do, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> He's blowing the doll. Jesus. I'm sure. Tra- <laughs> blowing the doll. But yeah, maybe they're just like, I don't know. Like hanging out at the house where he does, and the parents don't really know that he's gone out this far. And maybe they go out to find the house or whatever. They go to look for him in the woods or whatever, and they find this house and they see him walking back with the doll. And they're like, "What are you doing in this old house?" Well, this is where I found Rickety. He wanted to go here. He wanted to show me all of his dolls or something like that. And they're like, mm-hmm. "Okay, whatever, whatever, you know." You fucking weirdo. Fucking weird imaginary kid. I need to get our kids some counseling. <laughs> So, okay, so now we got to kill the other guy. Like, we got to kill Georgie, right? Georgie. So what are they doing? He's with Roy, we decided. Does he get yanked away from Roy somehow? And, like, it's kind of like yeah. he hears him scream. They're sitting down eating some Chinese food. That's what they're doing. They're having dinner. Okay. They're just chilling at the in the in the in in their they're bad guy warehouse. Chilling. Trying to figure out how they're going to figure yeah. out who killed this their yeah, friend. they're Netflix and chilling. You mean Netflix and villain. <laughs> Sorry, it's really bad. (laughs) So they're eating Chinese food, pissed off about what they're going to do. And they're like, when I find that motherfucker, I'm going to fucking kill him. You know, Georgie's all talking shit. And then Roy's like, but yeah, man, that's one less person we got to share the money with. Yeah, he's like, man, that's fucked up, man. 
He was our friend. Yeah, we've known him for like five years, man. He's been fucking. He, he covered your ass. He's like, I know, man. I hated his fucking mohawk. Fuck yeah, him. he was like, he's kind of a pain in the ass, though. Blah 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 blah. But they're like, we're still gonna fucking kill him anyway. Nobody fucks with us. Nobody fucks with the bad guy warehouse. Nobody, <laughs> nobody fucks with one eight hundred bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a comedy. We're just being silly. OK, yeah. uh, so OK, so they're in this room like they're sitting around a table eating their Chinese food, talking shit, just like regular banter. And then um, they hear a creaking again in the in the somewhere. The yeah. And then maybe like something falls. <laughs> so it's almost kind of like kind of paranormal in a way. Uh, how you know? about the bat that was used to kill? Falls right by the door near the office Just where they're falls eating. Falls and rolls towards them. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. It's all bloody and gross. right. Yeah, it has his hair on it. Right. Yeah. Part of his purple mohawk is on the fucking bat. So then one one guy goes out and he's like pulls a gun out. Right. Mm-hmm. Pulls his gun out of his waistband. Yeah, and he's like he's like you better he's like call fucking call fucking Roy dude call or no not Roy. Dick. Dick. He's like, call Dick, dude. We got to fucking take care of this shit. So Georgie is walking out of the office while Dick's like calling on the phone and he's got his gun already and he's ready to. He's maybe he's got a shotgun. Georgie has a shotgun. So he hears this creaking like in the office and he's like, what the fuck? Who's there? Yeah. And then and then something falls. And then he's he's like really spooked. So then he like quickly turns around to go and shoot at it. Right. But then just as he goes to pull the trigger, something comes up and flicks the gun right back towards his face and he shoots his own head off. Maybe it knocks it out of his hand. Yeah, he wants to shoot his head off. That'd be dope. Yeah, maybe it just knocks him. Oh, okay. That's I see what, what you're saying. saying. Yeah, he, but it's got to be. to turn to shoot. But that would be good. Like, But I think it should toy with him a little bit. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if you do it too quick, then it's just like there's no vibe to it. Um, but yeah, so like he knocks it you out of his hand. A little foreplay. I yeah, he's you. got a little little kill play. Mm-hmm. Um, so he knocks the shotgun out of his hand and he's like, what the fuck? And he falls back into like a locker fucking uh, row or some shit or whatever the fuck it is around him uh, into some car parts or whatever the hell it is. And then he, he goes to like feel around to get the shotgun and pull it up and grab it. And then he's just like, fuck you, motherfucker. He sees like a shadow in the distance or something like that. And he's just firing. And uh, meanwhile, fucking Roy's in like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, he goes over there to help him. Yeah, so he he's seeing him just, like, firing at random shit in the distance, and he's yelling at him, like, what the fuck are you shooting at? All of a sudden, something just, like, whooshes the stupid gun right up towards his face, and he shoots his own fucking head off. Okay. Shotgun. And then this is, as, like, Roy's, like, getting close to him, so maybe he's, like, you know... Get and, some brain matter and goo and shit all over uh, him. Yeah, okay. So maybe he, like, yeah, maybe he, like, puts his hand in it. You see his hand this time. He puts his hand in the blood and then and then he hears a door break or something like that. And then like window glass breaks and disappears. And then like he's like flicking on the lights and he's just like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on? He's like, Dick, you need to get the fuck down here right now. Yeah. George, he's dead. Yeah. Like I like the thing that you see like a wooden hand like rubbing the gore to like soak it up in a way. Mm hmm. Maybe you even see some of his torso. You don't really see like him, his face and stuff. Right. So then he goes back to the kid's house again. OK, but he's got like maybe the maybe the guy shot him with the shotgun. Yes, yeah, so he's missing an arm. Like, no, maybe he's just got buck shot. But or like, holes. yeah, like maybe the BBs or the 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 the, the buck shot like falls out out of the wood and they're on the ground and stuff. And Scotty finds it on the ground or something like that. So how does the his parents, Scotty and these guys come together I, that's that's do they come together or just like no i feel like no like how are we gonna maybe do... scotty follows the doll to this guy's to the to the bad guy's place and roy sees him yeah and tries to like take the kid i don't know just make him see him looking through a window or something after he sees the dude dead so he follows him home and then when he follows him home he's looking through the window and then sees the big doll sitting in the corner of the room with the buckshot holes in him. And then he puts two and two together and is like, holy shit, something weird is going on here. That's the fucking doll from that place we robbed like a year ago and that dude died. Okay. I think it would be better if he just like, I think it would be good if like the, you see the doll's face standing in the, in an area where the light's like halfway showing on him. You know what I mean? And 
he's like, what the fuck is this doll doing here kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Because like, they remember it because they they were spitting on it. And like he's like, is this yours? Blah, 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 blah. And so he kind of puts two and two together that this has to do with that Eugene guy that they robbed at that place. And so somehow Dick and him figured that out because now they're like panicked. Like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. What do you think? This is before he kills Dick's character that they figure that out. Maybe. Yeah. We talked about him killing Georgie and Roy saw it happen and kind of saw a shadowy figure run off or whatever and break a door and the glass breaks. He runs back home and like now he's like because he's like getting blood from these like his for his revenge. He's becoming more whole is the way that they was designed to be. And they think the kid like remember we talked about the dad bought him like a set and he was going to help him whittle the fucking doll complete and make it like 100 percent. Well, maybe um, the next day uh, something happens where the the parents kind of figure out something's off. They're finding like items from like that they don't know where are showing up and that or maybe they find a blood footprint or something like that from the doll. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they they kind of like freaked out a little bit about it. And so now that it's like the parents are like they see the doll sitting in the chair where Scotty puts them every night and it's kind of like the lights on them as they go to sleep. Like he, they say goodnight to the kid. They see the light on them and they're kind of like, and they, you know, they found a, fo- a bloody footprint and they didn't really understand what it was. Like Scotty doesn't wear a size 14. Right. Yeah. And it's not even like a human foot. It just looks like a shoe print almost mm-hmm. like there's no toes or anything on it. It's just like some weird flat, whatever. Maybe the mom's like cued in on it. Right. And somehow something happens where she, they want to get rid of the doll. They don't like it. And uh, because like the dog died, so that's like something's weirds happening, and there's blood footprints on the on the ground. The doors are always open at night, like when they wake up, and they think George or Scotty's doing it, and it's like they're like fuck this, like something's off. And so you see, it starts to have like this thing with the parents, but I think the parents try to get rid of the doll at some point. Mm-hmm. That's what it kills them, and it kills them after he goes to sleep. Right? Well, maybe he sees him too. Yeah, oh that- yeah, that might be kind of interesting. Yeah, but then... But yeah, but that would be so twisted, like, what the hell? Yeah, because then he just let him go kill other people. Maybe it's she, like, one of his parents dies. Right. And then the father sees uh, Georgie walking with the fucking Ricky, with Rickety at some point towards the warehouse, and there's this big showdown with Roy, Dick, and the dad and the child and all this, and, it, like, they all meet at the bad guy place. <laughs> what do you think? That works. I like the fact somehow he's got to kill the mom, though. She gets him in the morning and just throws him in the garbage. She's like, we got to get rid of that doll. There's something weird about it. I don't like Mm -hmm. it. He needs to let he's too obsessed. The kid's too obsessed with it or something. Okay. And so they throw it away and they're like, oh, Mr. Rickety had Rickety had to leave, you know. And so but the kid actually knows that they're lying because they threw him away. And he's like, no, he's not. He told me you threw him away because he brings him back somehow. Mm-hmm. And they threw him in the garbage truck. Like, like maybe you know when they close the truck and it crushes all the stuff? She threw it in there because she doesn't want it anymore. And the, it comes back that night. And he's like, you threw Mr. Rickety away. What the, f-? you know, like, what, what, why? Yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, eight-year-olds always say, what the fuck? Nowadays. <laughs> they probably would. So, so then, and then she's like panicked Mm -hmm. and she tells the husband, there's something really wrong. I threw that doll away. Yeah. And then he's like, he's like, he probably, maybe the guy, the trash man brought him back, felt bad and gave him back and and didn't, didn't want to crush it. Or I don't know. There's gotta be a reason. There's gotta be a reason, you know? And she was like, I don't know. Something's wrong or dog died, you know, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, honey. Don't worry. And so she goes out to have like a glass of wine and maybe do some chores or something like that in the middle of the night. And she goes out to smoke a guilt cigarette. Yeah. Maybe she's like has a hidden pack outside that she fucking smokes from Under a potted plant. Right. And then uh, she hears the rickety sound, you know, outside. Mm-hmm. And uh, she goes out to the shed to find out what it is. And that's when she gets fucking murdered. Never somehow. go to the shed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just hide behind these chainsaws and bones. Weird noises in the middle of the night in the <laughs> darkness. You don't ever go to the fucking shed. So how does she die? Like, he's got to kill her some fucking spiky thing on some object. Not necessarily a tool, but on something bigger than that. I don't know, something sharp in a, in a room. Pickaxe through the chest. 
him. Yeah, oh, maybe it should be really violent, though. It through her chest. Maybe she tries to block it. It goes through her hand or it goes through the bone between her arm. Snaps it. Yeah, and then breaks her arm and she's like, it's all flapping around. It and goes she, through her leg. She's screaming. Yeah. She's try- she sees him in the corner. Like, the light kind of shines and flashes <sighs> on him. She sees him in the corner and she's like, fucking screams. He goes to take off running and then he uh, takes the pickaxe or whatever and like shoves it through her leg. Well, I like, well, I want her to break her arm first, like snap it like the like right between the arm like right on her forearm Mm -hmm. so it sticks and it snaps one of her thing and her arms all dangling and fucking she's writhing and as you said like you said she's running he hits her in the leg she falls down and then he just starts spiking her in the head you know the back and stuff and then he does one last one and pulls her into the into the shed shed, as it's creaking and stuff you know like this whole everything that this the rickety man does you hear a creak here and there but he's fast as fuck somehow because he's fucking pair of fucking normal i don't know well lubed yeah he's like you know it's not that he's slow he's just rickety uh so now the dolls are like almost complete like he's getting blood from like a mom and stuff like that and uh the dog and the fucking the two guys like so who is left we got Dick, Dick and Roy. And Roy. And Roy's the main guy who came up with the idea. We're going to save his death for last, pretty much. Maybe the kid wakes up in the middle of the night and Rickety Man's le- trying to leave again. And he's trying to go to kill one of uh, Dick or Roy or whatever. And so the kid follows him. Uh, or no, maybe it's the next night because the father can't find the, the wife and she thinks he doesn't know what's going on. He's trying to reach her on her cell phone. And then maybe he finds the cell phone out near the shed but she's ringing by the shed yeah Yeah. and then her body's there like this is at night or something like that because she hasn't gotten home and uh maybe the police come and stuff like that and then like the police officer is like that's some fucking creepy doll you got there yeah or something you know makes a comment about it like and then the doll in the middle of the night like everybody's crying it's a real sad moment like they realize and then rickety man tries to leave and he goes chasing after Scotty. The little kid goes chasing after Rickety Man and runs up and grabs his hand. And they walk to the warehouse. He goes with him. Rickety Man whispers something in his ear. And then he goes chasing off with Rickety Man. The dad's trying to find guys. him and he doesn't know where he is. And we just that's like a side thing. Yeah, he just thing. sees they're both gone. So then he's like calling the cops trying to figure it out. OK, so, so they he, fo- Rick, he followed the little kid follows Scotty follows the rickety guy to one eight hundred bad guys. So okay, yeah, the, the bad guys. Uh, what, what do we call it? Lair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it one eight hundred bad guys. <laughs> so okay, so they go there, and Dick and Roy Roy are hearing something creaking outside, and they find the kid, but they don't find the rickety man. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, Roy's like, I heard that noise last night. Whatever. Before he's like, I've been hearing that that noise, before man. What killed- the fuck? Georgie. He's like, I think he's back, dude. Whatever the fuck is going on, somebody's back. He's like, man, we gotta call the fucking police, man. This shit's getting fucking out of hand. Like, this is not normal, man. We get, we can't fucking handle this. We gotta call somebody. He's like, you want us to call? You want us to call the police to our fucking chop shop with all these like fucking yeah. stolen shit all over the place? Yeah. Oh great yeah, idea. great idea. We're gonna go to fucking jail for the rest Brilliant of my life. Idea, you fuck. Yeah, I'd rather <laughs> fucking die, you idiot. Let's and then go. He dies. And then he dies. Right. And he, and it's it, a good moment. Q death maybe maybe Cute. when he's yelling at each other he goes out one of the doors and they well they see the kid May, maybe they get the kid he's like what are you doing here kid the fuck are you doing here he's like where's my daddy or you know what i mean i don't know where i'm at how did you get here the rickety man and they hear the cracking he's like what the fuck is that he's like look man i'm out of here dude like the other guy the dick guy is like i'm out of here man and he goes out through another door, kind of backwards. He's like, I've, I'm fucking done, man. I'm out. And as he's backing up, he bumps into Rickety Man, like up against his body. Mm-hmm. And somehow, Mr. Rickety Man just like sticks. Like maybe he reaches when he sees him in front of him. He just jams his thumbs in his eyes and just like pops off the side of his face a little bit. A little... <laughs> yeah, it's just like really violent. And he just throws him on the ga- ground real violent. And this is where you actually see Rickety Man in full force pretty much not a hundred percent like you know full-on doll just like done in a way that it shows enough of him so you kind of know and he's just smiling and walking all weird towards like the guy maybe the guy tries to use the kid as a shield or something yeah <laughs> roy puts him in front of him i feel like he should get killed in like some sort of like trash compactor where did they get a trash compactor it's a bad guy warehouse. They have all kinds they just of have shit. have one yeah. sitting around. Okay. Maybe it's like, uh, you know, where they crush cars. Maybe it's a fucking, you know, 
They could pop him in there or some shit. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think he needs to get a fucking brutal ass death, though, right? Yeah. Good. He should be backing up Trent with the kid and he falls in, sort of. That was just quick and over. Yeah, but it's, it's slow. Like it comes blood. down really slow. You have to put this gate in front of it because I used to work at like all these places. Oh. You stick like we would stick cardboard in there and it would mash it. And you'd have to lay it in there a certain way. Oh, yeah. I, had, I remember that. Do you know what I'm talking yep. about? So I feel like it should be like, you know, he, maybe he shoots rickety man a bunch of times in the chest and he's like maybe he even was able to maybe rickety man puts his hand up and his fingers get blown off a little bit. You know, <laughs> that'd be sweet. And uh, but they bleed. Maybe he just starts stabbing him with the, the, the fucking splintered hand. And then he falls backwards into a trash compactor. And as he's trying to get out, he pushes the button. Or maybe the kid does even. And it's just like they're like a team almost. Yeah. It's and it's kind of like dark. And it sprays on, you know, you see Rickety Man get the blood on him and it sprays on the kid's face. And then, like, the guy screams. It's really horrible. Like, it pops. And so the kid's, like, kind of fucked up anyway somehow, like, and they go back, and he's like, okay, let's go home, Mr. Rickety, or Rickety. And then they, you, you see him walk off, and then it's the next morning, and, like, Rickety Man's in the corner, you know, and uh, the dad's still freaked out by it a little bit. <laughs> and uh, But it. the kid's got blood on his face Burn or whatever. Down. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, where did you go last night? The he's like, too. I fell down or something. He says some kid thing. I don't know. And then... It's like later that night or something like that. And like the the father goes to bed and he sees a shadowy figure over the bed. And then you hear the creak. Mm -hmm. And that's where it ends. That's ending. Yeah. That works. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it kid, it's really that was really tough, actually. That was one of the tougher ones that we've done. It turns out pretty. It turned out kind of cool. I, I It has a lot of layers to it, guys. So, I mean. Obviously, we could probably flesh it out better. Some of the kills or uh, I don't know. Hopefully we described it pretty well for you and you could follow along because I know that that was a tough one for us. I can just tell you right now, uh, but I still like the idea. It's weird and and just like I wouldn't expect it to be some sort of mainstream movie. It's more of like a straight to video kind of movie, but like a, a higher indie budget, but not too high. Mm -hmm. Like I want it to be serious, you know. I love the element of the rickety sound, the creaking. I think that would be played throughout the whole thing, you know, and then maybe just a scream at the end. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just the creaking is cool. That, yeah, not, no scream. You and just he, do like the noise and then it just cuts to black. Right. And then the music, like some cool rock some band. Cool rock band. <laughs> it's like you too. So what's the fucking tagline, though? What are we going to call this shit? The, okay, so it's the rickety man. Well, yeah, the rickety man. <laughs> yeah. Rickety tickety. Not your average imaginary friend. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. We're reaching at this point. Johnny made a new friend, and he's made of wood. <laughs> like, I don't know. What? It's just got to be something just about the rickety man. It doesn't have to be about, like, what happened or whatever. It's just got to be, like, significant. You know what I mean? If you hear creaking, run or something like that. Don't speak while he creaks. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear a creak, don't speak. Run. <laughs> if you hear a creak, take a lead. If you hear him creaking. I just like if you hear him creaking, run. That's if fine. you hear something creaking, run. I would just like if you hear him instead of something. If you hear him yeah. creaking. All right. If you hear him creaking, run. What do you think? I think it's easy. Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't have to be something amazing each time. You need to be fucking poetic. Yeah, I know. Okay. So what do you fucking Shakespeare <laughs> over here? I really, really do like that creaking thing. So what do you guys think? Did you like the story? Uh, I know this one was a little tough maybe to follow. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. This is better than a handful of them that we've done. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> it's definitely I like true. the concept. It's different. I've never done it before. We've never talked about something like that. And it's just weird. And and like the kid involved, there was a lot of different characters. So it was a lot to do. So what do you guys think? Would you have changed anything? Would you have added anything? We made an eight-year-old murderer. Yeah, he's, like he, he's yeah. Now he's like his his uh, Robin, like yes. Rick, rickety, like Rickety Junior. Rickety Junior. 
Oh, my the rickety God. The boy. Holy shit. What? What if in the sequel, Rickety Man kills him over a fucking toy doll that he whittles? Perfect. And there is... A Rickety Jr. Yeah, it's like a Rickety family. What if, like, each sequel is, like, junior, a new he, member he to the family? an eight-year-old child. It's great. It's a good start. <laughs> It's a good start. The first thing that Come happens. Come on, it's in- a fucking movie. No, I'm a, I'm not I'm oh. I'm not being facetious. Oh, I'm being I, serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you start a fucking movie. First kill in part two, he kills an eight year old. Right. It's the great And he rubs he's like just goes. rubs his body all <laughs> rag dolly all over a fucking oh my God. I know. That's straight to video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. I, I'm sorry, guys. No I'm not trying to. That. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not like. I just got it. I'm a sick fuck. All right. I'm it's sorry. Fine. This, that's perfect. But it makes Most sense, right? Like, wouldn't it be video. great? Yes, that's great. Like, you don't even need to show that that the, the kid dying or whatever. You could just like. Yeah, you'll show it. But you could like do it in some way where you see it's his bloody sweater, like or something like that, and it's like it's got the same blonde hair. Like he sewed his fucking or just scalp. His head. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, my God, Brittany. Well. On a pike. Like we're a going spike. there. We're fucking going to go there. That's all <laughs> I got to say. Well, what do you guys think? Would you watch part two as well? No, probably not. Uh, I would, but. I, I would still do it. I would gross. watch it. <laughs> One, yeah. because I made it, too, because fuck yeah. If you've uh, watched a Serbian film, you can get the fuck over it. Yeah. <laughs> And you can watch this part two of Rickety Man. Yeah, sorry to be dis- distasteful, guys, but that's just the way it is. Rickety Jr. Yeah. Yeah, rickety too. Uh, yeah. Pint-sized rickety. R- Mr. the rickety boy. That's part two. I like Junior better. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, guys, let <laughs> us know what you think of this story in the comments below. We really appreciate it. Uh, love hearing back from you. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any other fucking movie title names that you want, I mean, don't submit like 10 or 5 of them to us. Just send us a couple and we'll we'll put it in uh, the cup here and then we'll even give you a shout out uh, whatever name that you you know want to use for it uh, we'll give you a shout out on the cast so we want to get you guys more involved in this and eventually we want to get some more people from the industry who come on and write these uh, stories up with us on the spot too so but uh, don't forget guys this Thursday we will be back with a brand new episode a double feature the way that it was intended when it aired I drink your blood and and I eat your skin. So definitely if you want to watch those before we talk about them and probably spoil them, we'll save the spoilers to the end. And uh, as always, thank you guys so much for coming by. If you haven't already, check by the longlivethevoid.com website. But other than that, thank you guys. Stay weird, monsters.